Well, Dad just headed off to the elevator with that last gravity box full of beans for the second time. He called ahead this morning to make sure that they were back in, back in action, and they said they were, so give that a shot. Uh, he and I this morning got the elevator set up here, um, finished putting the boards in the corn cribs. Uh, so we've got one ready to go, and then later this afternoon we're going to put that vent in that I built. Uh, it's a perfect day to do that, so we'll get that in. While he's gone, I'm going to get the corn picker pulled up and uh, get that greased to do any maintenance on that that we need to do, make sure its chains are tight. Kind of all the same operation that I did on the combine, but it's a little bit simpler machine, so that'll be a little bit quicker process to get that all done. It just should take a couple hours and we'll be ready to go with that. And we're moving ahead towards picking corn. Got to drag the corn picker out of its woodsy parking spot. Just about any farmer will agree when you have hydraulic hoses to hook up, it doesn't matter how you hook them up the first time, they're going to be wrong. Alright, this should be up. Nope, they're wrong. <laughs> sometimes things go easy, sometimes things don't. Well, we've got the corn picker about half tuned up here, but I thought I'd take a minute to give you a quick tour of how the machine works. It's pretty basic and we can go through it fairly quickly. So essentially, this takes two rows of corn at a time and they each come in one of these slots. Each row goes in a slot. These are called the gathering chains and they pull the corn stalk in and then you can see there are two rollers next to each other. And the gap between the rollers starts out wider and gets narrower. So as the corn stalk comes in, the rollers shove the corn stalk down and the cob, which is bigger in diameter than the stalk, gets snapped off. Hence, these are called snapping rollers. Uh, the cobs then fall down the ramp onto this elevator chain, which takes them up under that shroud. Walk around back. The cobs then come out the end of the elevator up here. Half of them fall down this side and half of them fall into this auger and they're distributed evenly then over these rollers and this is called the husking bed. And the rollers here, there's a rubber one next to a metal one in each case and each, the cobs are supposed to filter down here in a single layer and the rubber roller grabs the husk on the corn cob and pulls it down and shoves it underneath the husking bed and separates it from the corn cob. These finger wheels, pardon those, are not the best looking right now, uh, the finger wheels help keep the cobs pressed down to those rollers to try to make as, most, uh, as much contact as possible to strip the husks off. The corn cobs then fall down into this pit down here and if we back up you can see that is the elevator that then takes them up and drops, drops them in the wagon which is hitched to the back of the corn picker right here. And that is essentially the entire machine. As a side note, compared to modern combines and harvesting equipment that is manufactured in the present day. This is considered an antique. The company that made these, New Idea, doesn't exist anymore. Um, parts are scarce, hard to come by. Uh, a lot of times you're going to a scrapyard if you need pieces and parts. We actually have a whole other corn picker in the woods that we use to scavenge things from when we need them. Yeah, this is considered pretty old, pretty simple technology. Almost nobody does this anymore. <laughs> so, uh, I guess, yay for being in the minority? I don't know. It works for us. Hello everyone, uh, little fixes here on the farm this morning. Uh, we finished tuning up the picker last night. Um, now just a couple of things on tractors that needed to be done. It seems like this is a good time of year to take care of any little odds and ends, usually because you become more aware of them as you're using the equipment more. On the farm all M here, I've got the hood off. Uh, the steering was particularly loose. I was telling Dad, going down the road with this thing is like taking your life into your hands. It's like driving a big metal coffin. But um. The steering was real loose so the front wheels would the front wheels would go kind of crazy on you while you were driving. Um, I like to use this tractor to haul loads of corn from the field up to the elevator just because it's maneuverable and it's light. Um, so I took the front uh, bolster cap off of there and checked the worm gear and uh, tightened up the castle nut on that a little bit. That helped a little bit but then actually the problem, the main problem was in the linkage here where the two different shafts join each other, there was quite a bit of play there so I tightened that up. And then here on the 686 the uh, tie rod was loose on there and this 
little arm, I'm not sure what it's specifically called, but that little arm that connects to the steering spindle, that was loose as well, so we got that tightened up. And then this tire was due for replacement, and we were gonna get another one, and then it became an urgent problem because there's the inner tube bulging out from the inside, so if we drive this at all, it's gonna blow on us. <laughs> so we're gonna, we're gonna, we've got a new tire on order, we should be able to get that today. And luckily, uh, if we need to, this hub on here matches some of the wagons on the farm, so we can always throw a wagon tire on there if we just need to keep going. Or we can throw another tractor on the corn picker, that's okay too. So yeah, little odds and ends, just things that you, you discover as you're tuning stuff up and decide it's probably a good idea to take care of them now before we get out in the field. Um, maintenance, basic maintenance, fact of life. Now it's no secret the Farm All M is a rough looking old tractor and uh, it's been through its paces out here for many, many years. Um, one of the things is I was working on the front steering. This is the front end that was on there. Uh, the sheet metal's pretty beat up and was in rough shape and for a while Dad has had one sitting up by the machine shed that uh, uh, he found somewhere. I'm not sure where he picked it up but it's a much better looking front end. So I just threw that on there and hey, not bad. A little cosmetic upgrade for the old M. Every farmer should have a telehandler forklift. We're gonna put that vent up in the corn crib. Well, there it is. There's a hole cut through the boards in the bottom to allow air to come up through that trench that goes underneath. And she goes all the way up. And there's some wires up at the top anchoring it to that top ring to keep it standing up upright as the corn's coming in. Well, you don't see that every day. So Dad just ran off to get that new tire for the 686 and uh, he also wanted to pick up some parts for the stock chopper, which is what I've got suspended from the forklift forks over here. Um, before anybody says it, yeah, I'm aware this is not the safest situation in the world. But I can tell you we've tried to work on the stock chopper before when knives need to be replaced by laying underneath it, and that's awful as well. You're, there's hardly any room and it's probably actually more dangerous because if you're using a grinder or something and it kicks back, it gets you in the face. So, um, this is preferable. And uh, to be fair, that forklift has safety lockouts on all the hydraulics. So it would take a log chain breaking for that thing to come down on anyone, and that hasn't happened yet. We've done this more than a few times. We're going to replace and repair a few knives under the stock chopper and do a little bit of welding on it because there's, it seems destined to shake itself apart. I'm just going to be real honest. This thing is miserable to work on, and it's miserable to use. So if we could somehow stop using it, that would be great. So mostly we just need to replace a couple of knives where they flew off, uh, the bolts break or the brackets break and then out they go, um, usually when you hit a rock or something in the field. However this block over here actually tore out completely so we're going to grind that off and put a replacement block on there, we'll weld that on. And then this, down on the axle, this once actually cracked off out in the field and fell apart. So Dad, I don't know if you can see that, that's where it broke, but then Dad managed to sleeve it on the inside with another piece of pipe and weld the parts together. But uh, the vibration in the machine is so intense when you're using it that even those welds seem to have come apart now, so we should probably 
regrind that out, reset it, and uh, try to tack it back together in a way that's going to hold a little bit better. Too wimpy. Just right. Oh, we got part of it. We got to grind a little more and then clean up the welds that are going to be left behind. All right, so we just finished up working on the stock chopper. Welded a new lug on here with new knives on some spots where we'd lost them. And then this axle that was cracked. This is my first real attempt at any kind of major welding and I think it's going to hold it together okay. So that'll reinforce that. And the wheels were a little skewed, so one end of the stock chopper kind of was lower than the other when we were using it, so we tried to correct that. And uh, this is, should be ready to go now for in the field. So as a little postscript to this video, um, I've noticed, not necessarily through the comments, but uh, just as the number of views have shown up on the different videos, that some people like to watch the maintenance side of the farm work. Um, whether it's because they like equipment or just because they're following the whole story, uh, with the kind of vlog aspect of things. But then other people just like to see the equipment working in the fields. So if you're into the maintenance part of the videos, then this is your lucky day, because uh, that's all this video's been about and all it's gonna be about. I could go into the corn harvest, but I'm just gonna split that off into a whole different video, and then that video will be just the corn picking part of things. So if you're into the, the harvesting videos and stuff, that's coming up, so just sit tight and we'll have that up pretty shortly here.